Hey guys, welcome back to another Dr. Soybean Let's Play here on the Neon Nightcast channel. And today I'm going to be playing Super Widget for the Super Nintendo. Uh, this is kind of a, I guess, action platformer game, you'd say. Uh, not very well remembered, though. I don't often hear this game talked about very much or uh, see it played very much, so uh, I figured I'd give it a go. This is actually a game I've owned since I was a kid and played it a lot throughout the years, and I think it's pretty fun and pretty underrated, too. So the basic mechanic is your widget, and you don't jump on enemies, you punch them. Uh, that's a shield there that gives you an extra hit. But the main mechanic is there are all these uh, icons that transform you into different uh, forms and give you different powers, which makes the game a lot more interesting. Uh, here's the first one, for example. Uh, now I'm Duck Widget. I can spit as an attack. And also, if you see, uh, my uh, feet kind of turn into hooves when I jump down, so you can actually jump on enemies in this form. So Widget was uh, both a video game series and a cartoon series back in the day. Uh, the day being the 90s, of course. And I actually don't know which came first, the... Uh, games or the television series and I was too lazy to do the research to find out so I got a second uh, L icon and that turns you into the uh, upgraded form of that particular transformation so you kinda have a better uh, shot and you can still jump on people and now there's a third L but since I've already gone as far as I can go it's just gonna give me a shield So the basic premise of this is you're a world watcher, uh, essentially protecting different planets from alien threats. And that's what the majority of this game is, is uh, going through different uh, worlds and fighting enemies. Pretty basic stuff. Okay, let's get our shield back. And there's an extra life. Like in many games, uh, collect 100 coins, get an extra life. Uh, these icons up here, the horse head icons, I collect them when I see them. I don't really bother with them. Uh, the only real um, relevance they have is for points, essentially. Okay, and this is a little bonus area. So let's go there. And Widget the show, by the way, was nothing like this. There, he wasn't really fighting aliens. He was kind of just on Earth uh, solving environmental problems. It was one of the uh, uh, environmental-themed uh, shows of the early 90s, kind of similar to Captain Planet, if anybody remembers that. Keep fucking up that jump here. Mechanics in this game are pretty good. Some of the jumps are a little tricky, but overall it's pretty well done. Uh, this icon here is actually invincibility. I'll get that shield. Alright, and that's pretty much it for this area. Just some bonus coins, basically. And now we're going to fight our first boss, and I'm actually going to take this, which is probably my favorite form, because you get this nice blaster like that in two directions. So the first boss is Ratchet, who is uh, one of Widget's main enemies, I guess you'd say. And he is not very difficult at all. In fact, he's already been defeated. So at the end of each uh, level, they give you a battle rank and a time rank based on... The time rank is obviously based on how long it takes you to complete the level. I don't know what they base the battle rank on. Alright, I'll stay with this power for now. So 
So environmentalism seemed to be a pretty, uh, hot-button issue in the early 90s, maybe even more so than now. Because as I mentioned, you had Widget. Uh, fuck the Nebula. You had Widget, you had Captain Planet, you also had, uh, Stop the Smoggies, if anybody remembers that. Okay, now you can see the tidal wave coming. We're about to go to an underwater level. And right away I'll get that, which gives you an underwater form. You can swim much more uh, easily. Oh, let's get that for a shield. I'm not going to bother with that nebula, not worth the risk. Watch out for the giant clam. Okay, and time for the second boss, and... Hmm... Let's get that for the shield, but I'm actually going to use this to fight him. This is another very easy boss, by the way. The game does get difficult, but not till much later on. This is actually a relatively long game. So basically all this guy does is launch eggs, which spawn little infant versions of himself. As you can see there, I could even take him out prior to him uh, launching them. And he's already dead as well. Let's see what they rank us. See, battle rank B, I don't know what that entails. Maybe because I took a couple hits this time. Okay, now we get a little bonus world. No enemies here, this is simply just to collect coins. Design kind of actually reminds me of, uh, I don't know why, it makes me think of Rainbow Road uh, from the Super Nintendo Mario Kart. So let's rack up some coins and get some extra lives. I don't want to fall down there. There we go. So about the whole environmental theme, I don't think there was ever a Smoggies game. I know there was a Captain Planet game for the original Nintendo. Uh, I've played it before, but was not very impressed. It's a pretty bad game, actually. Uh, so this world is kind of actually a, an amusement park world. Billionaire Ted Turner, I think, had a hand in creating uh, Captain Planet. That guy had his finger in all kinds of pies back in the 90s. Ted Turner, of course, the man responsible for WCW, the first uh, wrestling promotion, and still the only wrestling promotion to ever really challenge the uh, WWE slash WWF. Don't know if any of you guys are wrestling fans, but uh, I've kind of been in and out of it throughout the years. I've always liked WWE more than any of its competition, but... Uh, haven't been watching it recently, really, since Daniel Bryan retired. Daniel Bryan kind of got me back into it for a while, and then he had to retire due to injuries, and there was not really anybody in there now that excites me as much as Daniel Bryan did. Now, this part's kind of annoying. I'm trying to get some coins, but just getting bounced all over the place, so I think I might say fuck the coins, and let's just continue on. So we already have eight lives. We're doing pretty well. Uh, 
Oh, I actually didn't want to get that, but that's alright. Boing, 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 boing. All right. It's another little uh, bonus area up here that I'm gonna try to get to. Take him out. Yeah. Whoops. Get the fuck away from me. Get the fuck away from me. He was right on my ass. Those uh, pink coins, by the way, are 20 and 1. And this, I think, is an enemy. Yeah. Should not have bothered. There we go. Alright, let's get our superpower back. By the way, this is the first form of the uh, S power, which I don't think you guys saw yet. Kind of, I guess, a Tarzan type uh, thing. See, if he would have done shit like this in the show, I might have watched it, but... It's always him transforming into scientists and news reporters and shit like that. This guy can be a little dangerous. He takes several hits and he breathes fire. Okay. Alright, boss time. Let's get our superpower. Now, this guy's weird. Because uh, he just sits here tossing coins at you. And you can actually stand here and mine coins from him from for quite some time. Uh, it's not until you actually attack him that he reveals his true colors and starts attacking you, so... But fuck it, I don't need coins that badly. So basically you gotta avoid that indestructible beam that's bouncing around. Also that thing that comes out to the bottom left but you can easily take it out with the power. And he's done for. Begging for mercy, John away. And I took hits there, yet they gave me a battle rank of A, so I really don't know what the hell they're basing that on. But that feels like a good place to end part one, so I will see you in part two.